All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the future of Facebook Marketplace dropshipping and why I think it is becoming more and more an amazing opportunity uh, if you understand what it is I'm going to show you here today. Now, first thing I wanna talk about before we get into that content is if you guys didn't know, underneath this video, the first link, I have a free, completely free, course uh sorry ebook all about facebook marketplace drop shipping um if you haven't gotten that yet it's completely free so just click that first link and grab it it'll also put you on the wait list for once my once my facebook marketplace drop shipping course opens back up i know a lot of you have grabbed that ebook already but some of you guys don't know about it yet and some of you know about it and haven't grabbed it but hey it's completely free so giving that to you guys if you want to check that out um cool there i am <laughs> all right so the first thing i wanted to talk about here has to do with some new updates to Facebook Marketplace and how I think it's really creating more of an opportunity for us as sellers on Facebook Marketplace. So I had to pre-record this for you all uh, about this new thing that Facebook has uh, called promotions. So promotions are basically a way for you to, um, it's like a markdown for Facebook Marketplace. So you might have an item that's listed for $100 and you and there'll be a slash through it and says it's only like $95. So that would be 5% off or $5 off. So when you come over to Facebook Marketplace now, um, on the left, there's a button for promotions and you can create a promotion here. So here I'm creating a 4th of July sale. I'm gonna give a percentage off, which is what makes more sense for these. Do a percentage off. I'll do, let's say 10% off in this example. And then you could do a start and end date for these and the end time and you can either apply it to listings individually or you can just uh, apply it to all of your listings so and then and then click start and now you'll see right here here's the item and you see the price on the right in this case it's $33 but as a slash through it, it now says $29 and 70 cents see that right there so that is a really really helpful tool for us as sellers because being able to put that slash through it, it's it's psychological for buyers. It makes them think they're getting a better deal, even if you mark it up beforehand, but that's really not the way it's intended to be use, used. But as if it has something like that, uh, it, it really motivates buyers to buy the items because uh, they think they're getting a good deal out of it. Now, the other thing that's changed on Facebook Marketplace that I noticed is that there's now an option when you're going to list items uh, on, on your all listings page where you can select a drop down and actually choose um, as long as you have a business attached to your profile you can choose to list items as that business instead of as yourself from your own personal profile and that as far as i remember was not there before so unfortunately even when you select that drop down i'm still not able to list items as a business but it shows that they're working on it, that they're working on adding that functionality. So this is something I've been talking about for over six months now, about how Facebook Marketplace needs a way for us to be able to sell as a business and not as an individual. And Facebook has, has been working on that. We know they're working on that. Some of my students actually have the ability to do that, but it's on a invite, invitation basis and it's not available to everyone. And even though I've tried to be able to get access to it, I've not been able to get access to those features. And in the past, there was one way of, of setting this up that was a little bit complicated and difficult. And now this new way would actually be a lot easier. So which way Facebook is ultimately going to go with, I'm not sure, but they have both options right now. They're obviously testing out both of them and trying both of them. And in general, what we're seeing on Facebook Marketplace more and more is that they are testing new features and testing removing features, right? They're seeing how the platform responds, how, how buyers and sellers respond as they add and subtract these more robust features. So what does that mean for Facebook Marketplace? It means that Facebook is taking Facebook Marketplace much more seriously. Now, in the past, when Facebook Marketplace was first created, I don't think that Facebook was initially trying to compete with marketplaces like eBay or Amazon or even Walmart.com. 
I think they just kind of set it up as as more of like uh, you know like an ancillary benefit to using Facebook. And the reason I think that is because when they created Facebook Marketplace, they didn't change all that much of it for a while. It just kind of stood the way it was. They didn't add or expand the features of it or put too much money or R&R behind it. But once they started to really roll out the shipping option for more sellers, meaning they gave more sellers the option of offering shipping on their on their listings, which they did increasingly in 2020 and into 2021, that really opened up a lot of opportunity. A lot of opportunities for us sellers, obviously, for buyers and for Facebook as well. Because what we've seen is that as soon as we were able to do that, we were obviously able to scale up selling on Facebook Marketplace much more. And it really unlocked the ability for us to do drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace as well. So it, it, it uh, really unlocked a ton of opportunity. And I think at this point, there's no way for Facebook to ignore just how big Facebook Marketplace is getting. In fact, it has a ton of customers buying on, on Facebook Marketplace every single month and it's just growing and growing. So I don't think Facebook can ignore this anymore. I think they, they are now taking it a lot more seriously and they're trying out a lot of these new features to see, hey, how can we help our sellers expand be bigger so that they can make more money so that Facebook can make more money as well because at the end of the day, that is what matters to them. And I still think this is in its infancy because it's still very new. We still see really high margins. We're still making, uh, we're still doing really well selling on Facebook Marketplace. I have students going in within a few short months already making several thousand dollars in profit selling on Facebook Marketplace. So there's a ton of potential that still exists there and I still think it is in its infancy and it's only going to grow, especially as Facebook understands exactly how much money they can make from it. And that's particularly important right now because there have been some updates that have impacted Facebook's businesses. So um, Facebook has recently or uh, recently had this problem with Apple devices, iOS devices, because what has happened is that with the new iOS 14, once you log into your Facebook app for the first time on your phone or these other apps, uh, then you get an alert that says, hey, do you want Facebook to be able to track you across other apps? The reason Facebook tracks you across other apps is because they, they, the way they make money, the primary way that they make money is by selling ads. I'm sure you've seen ads scrolling through Facebook. That is how they make their money. And the reason Facebook makes so much money with ads is not only because so many people use Facebook, but also because Facebook ads are incredibly targeted. Facebook has a ton of data on you, whether you like it or not, they have a ton of data on you. And it's not only based on well, your profile, what you fill in for your profile, it's also based on who your friends are. They can even scan your images. They can scan your posts. So they know a lot about who you are and your buying habits. And they're even able to track you across other websites, across browsers, across apps on your phone. And what they do with that data is they're able to understand better who you are as a buyer to, so that the, the ads are more laser focused for you. And they're able to see if you've actually made purchases on other websites which is important for anyone paying for ads on Facebook to, to understand if the ads that their customers are being seen are actually resulting in sales. But iOS, Apple has made that more difficult for Facebook by giving us consumers the ability to block Facebook from tracking us across other apps, which could have and does will have a negative impact on the main way that Facebook makes money, which is with their ads. So I think Facebook um, is going to start to look for ways, additional ways to kind of supplement their, their income so that all their eggs are really in one basket. And I think because of the huge opportunity that exists on Facebook Marketplace, they're not going to ignore this. They're going to see, hey, how much, how much more can we make with this? How much more can we expand this so that that can be a money maker for us as well? So those are some of the big updates with, with Facebook Marketplace that I wanted to discuss. Now, as as normal, 
anytime there's any major changes to Facebook Marketplace, those are added to my course, which is all about how to do Facebook Marketplace drop shipping. Um, so I have a course all about that, as I alluded to before. Um, so those updates are already in here. I have one um, right here. Where did it go? A quick way to boost sales for all, all of you who are inside my course already. That will teach you the strategy that I've been using for promotions. And the other lesson that I added in here is a new tracking number solution. So those of you who are members of my my Facebook Marketplace dropshipping course, you know that I have a couple of lessons here all about how to deal with tracking numbers on Facebook Marketplace. If you ever get a tracking number that can't be uploaded to Facebook Marketplace because it's an Amazon one or because Walmart delivered the item with DoorDash or for whatever other reason, I've had solutions for that and I have a really awesome new solution as well that I put in here uh, for this lesson right here that is really powerful and it's probably the best solution that I've, I've found better than any of the other ones I put in here before. So that's going to be included. Those updates, of course, are included for free because I always make sure that any updates to my courses, including my Facebook Marketplace dropshipping course, is included for existing students for free. And just a one last final reminder here, guys, I do have that free ebook all about Facebook Marketplace dropshipping. So if you didn't get to join the course while the doors for enrollment were still open, you can get this free ebook that will give you some, you know, the first few lessons on how to set up a uh, Facebook Marketplace dropshipping account completely free. Um, you just got to get on the wait list for the course and then uh, you'll get an email to you. All right, cool. So let me now jump into the comments, see what questions you guys have about uh, drop shipping, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Amazon, whatever it is. I'll do my best to answer those for you. All right. Sean is here. Sean says, number two on the like. Yeah, if you guys are enjoying this content and appreciate the updates, I would appreciate you giving the video a big thumbs up. Yes, Sean, I'm doing well. I hope you and your family are doing well as well. <laughs> uh, nice. Awesome to hear. Dropshipping Cam says, I've made $750 my first 13 days with my client because uh, they work as a VA. Dropshipping on Facebook Marketplace. Huge potential there. Yeah. And, you know, these are not um, extraordinary numbers. This is what we're seeing for a lot of people. They just start out and they're able to get sales pretty quickly with Facebook Marketplace drop shipping, a lot, a lot of potential there. And like I said, I still think it's in its infancy. I still think it's gonna grow a lot from here. Doing excellent, Mark, how are you? Uh, Tyler's take says, crypto broke me. Now we need to learn how to drop ship on Facebook. So if you don't know who Tyler's take is, his channel used to be called Dropship Tyler, but he has a lot more than that. So he changed his channel to Tyler's take. Uh, he recently made a video about how he went all in with cryptocurrency. And uh, he also made a really awesome video recently about Walmart marketplace, uh, Walmart dropshipping, dropshipping on Walmart. So uh, I know he's not struggling too much when it comes to the dropshipping. I might have him on my channel to talk about Walmart because that's something that I don't know too much about. So maybe we'll have him as an expert on about Walmart dropshipping. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about crypto as well. <laughs> See where it's at for him. Hey, Sammy, Paul J. Leitsky, maybe a couple of seconds late. <laughs> hey, Kimberly, thanks for coming back. I'm great. How are you? Hello, Daniel. Ben, doing great, man. Thanks for being here. Hello, Annie. Thanks for coming back. Always great to see you see your name up here. And Mary, great to see you here as usual. Um, what's up, everyone? LOL Buddy says, is there a way you can get a payment faster in Facebook Marketplace dropshipping? So when you get paid on Facebook Marketplace, the primary way you're going to get paid is directly through Facebook. So there's a buy button uh, if you have the shipping option. So if you have that option, the buyer clicks it, then the payment goes through Facebook. Okay. So then the question becomes, well, when do you actually get that money? So you get that money. The fastest way to get it is to upload a valid tracking number. That, and once you do that and the item shows it, it was delivered, you should get your money a few business days later. That's the fastest way to get it. So the best thing to do is to upload valid tracking numbers. That's why it's important. That's why I added that new lesson into the course. Let me square this up a little bit. Um, all about how to make sure you always get those valid tracking numbers. 
This is a great feature. I have listing items as a business page and making sales. That's, I mean, send me a DM on Instagram because I don't know why it's not working for me. I've tried everything. I've, I've talked to a few people who have had it. it. Hasn't worked for me even with their advice. So Philip, I don't know. I would love to hear how it's working for you. Maybe you can send me a DM on Instagram at Paul J Lipsky and tell me how you unlocked it. Cause I want, I want to, I want it. I don't know why it's not working for me. How much money you can make for items below $50. So you can always have a markup on your items. Um, now with cheaper items, if you have, let's say like a 20% markup on your items for cheaper items, the dollar amount of a 20% markup isn't going to be as much as a 20% markup on a more expensive item. But I do suggest that as a new seller, you stick with cheaper items that are like below $50 because that's going to generate sales. And really as a new seller, you, you want to generate sales. You want that, that confidence that it works. You want to show Facebook marketplace or actually what, whatever platform you're selling on, you want to show them that you're able to fulfill orders. And you just want to get the ball rolling and kind of trigger the algorithm to understand that you're a seller that makes sales. So that's why we keep items cheaper. Uh, the more expensive items won't sell as quickly because people spend more time making decisions on those purchases than they would on the cheaper ones. Um, Happy Hoppy Cat says, yes, me too. Something like I have to request Facebook to review my business account because I didn't meet some type of criteria. Huh, interesting. See, for me, it's just a drop dropdown. Um, I don't want to show it, um, but it's just a drop down where I can select either either the profile that I'm selling under or the business page that's associated with that. Um, and when I select the business page, it doesn't show any listings, but it also doesn't give me the option to list under that page. So I'm not sure what the problem is with all of it. Um, I play with it a lot, just trying to figure it out and just couldn't get it to work. What if I don't have the shipping option? So yeah, not every account has a shipping option unlocked. And the shipping option, again, is just where you have the ability to say on the listing, hey, I will ship this to you if you purchase it from me. So in that case, the buyer just presses a button that says buy now, and then they're able to pay directly through Facebook and you ship the item to them. Um, if you don't have the shipping option available, there's a few reasons it might not be available. First, if you're in a country that doesn't support it, it is supported here in the United States. It's not supported in every country right now. Also, if you have a brand new account, you won't have the shipping option on it. It's only available on more established accounts. So maybe it just will take some time for you to, for you to unlock the shipping option. And the third most common reason is if you've run Facebook ads before, which we talked about a little bit before Facebook ads, but if you run Facebook ads and you have your, your business manager account on for Facebook ads, uh, you, you um, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you you go against the guidelines, so you lose your ability to run ads, uh, either because you posted an ad that you know Facebook didn't agree with that violated one of their rules. So now you don't have the ability to run ads. If that happens to you, then you also won't have the ability to list items with the shipping option. So all you have to do is go into your business manager and appeal it so that you get your ads account back. Don't actually run ads, but instead just start doing Facebook Marketplace instead. Um, uh, okay, so I'm doing Amazon to eBay drop shipping, and every time I try to increase my limits, they always decline me. Can I have some advice? So in general, I advise against doing Amazon to eBay drop shipping. eBay really doesn't like Amazon. They see it as a major competitor. So they really don't want people doing it. Um, and they'll lower you in the search results um, if you try, if, if they figure out that you're doing it. They'll lower those listings in the search results. Um, so that would be my first piece of advice. I don't know if that has anything to do with why you're being denied. Probably not. It's probably because you haven't made enough sales yet. So what you need to do is generate more sales. Prove to eBay that you can make sales, you can fill orders, and you can make them money. That's what they ultimately want. Once you do that, then uh, they will uh, unlock, uh, they will increase your limit. Hey, Tara, thanks for being here. Um, yes, I do. 
Um, some people saying their tax review is is taking a long time on Facebook Marketplace. So in that case, yeah, you have to reach out to their um, you have to reach out to their customer support on e, uh, Facebook Marketplace, which you can do directly from the phone is the easiest way that I found to do it. And just just tell them the whole situation. Send them a bunch of messages. Hey, XD Tony. Thanks so much. Glad you're loving it. Daniel says, would you suggest having a separate store for wholesale versus retail, or should I just have one account for both? So I assume you're talking about eBay dropshipping. For eBay dropshipping, um, it's pretty easy to create a second account, but I would suggest that you do everything under one account at first. Do it all under one account, because that account will already have sales history, it already has feedback, um, so it will help you out in the beginning. But once you start to see that, um, I'm assume, also assuming that you're already doing retail successfully, but once you start to see that wholesale starting to take off and starting to pick up, then I would create a second account and exclusively keep one account retail and one account wholesale, just for organization purposes. Hey, yeah, congratulations, Sal, one, two, three, five. Um, ooh, Sammy says, I made my first sale, congrats, Sammy, but it's a Home Depot item and it's out of stock for a week as I'm back order, any advice? Yeah, so first, Sammy, first thing I would do is make sure this doesn't happen again. So I would use a good repricing software. So I don't know which marketplace you're selling on, but if it's eBay and Facebook Marketplace, both of them, you can use AutoDS for that. Um, and I really suggest you have something like that because that will let you know if the item goes out of stock or the price changes on Home Depot so that you don't, this doesn't happen again. Now, now that it's already happened, what I, and I have, I have a link, to, I have an affiliate link to AutoDS in the description of this video. But now that it's already happened, first thing I would try, Sammy, is go see if the item's available on another website. Sometimes you might be able to find this item on like walmart.com or another website. Um, try to find the exact same item somewhere else. Even if you end up losing a little bit money because it ends up costing a little bit more, that's better than having to cancel the sale or make the customer upset, in my opinion, as long as it's not too much. So I would definitely try that first. If you're unable to find it on another website, then you should go and uh, reach out to the buyer. And that's when you have to start to say, hey, can, can we ship you something else? Are you willing to wait for the item? And that That's when you really have to use some good customer uh, negotiation and uh, customer service. For those of you inside my eBay course, I have scripts exactly what I say to my customers every single time. So it's like a template for you to follow. Um, but that's generally what we do. What teeth whitener do you use? Don't use any tooth whitener, but thank you. Um, your teeth are super white, bro. I think it's just a camera. I don't think they're that white in person. Hey, what's up, Noah? Thanks for being here. Noah also has a really great YouTube channel. Um, if you guys watch my channel, then you'll really like Noah's channel. You'll really like Tyler's Takes channel. Um, so definitely check them both out. Subscribe. Check out check out some of their videos. Um, Noah does Walmart drop shipping as well. So uh, I gotta have some other people on at some point. <laughs> um. Paul is here. Paul L is here. The other Paul L. Haven't seen you in a while, man. It says, great to see you, Paul. Still dropping golden nuggets on dropshipping. Huh. Absolutely, man. All right. Living right. Tyler, I told you two weeks ago crypto was crashing. <laughs> there you go, man. You got to listen to the uh, guru, Matt Gambrell. So uh, Matt's, Matt also has a great YouTube channel as well. Um, again, if you guys like my channel, like his, so check him out. Check out his channel. All right, I, I missed some messages here. All right, I don't know where I left off. How's managed payments going for you on eBay? Uh, just fine. Uh, kind of almost old news at this point. It's this is something that's that happened a while ago, so all the kinks worked out with that, so no issues with it. Can you show a screenshot of the shipping option? Um, let me see if I can pull one up 
on the account that I don't really care about. I'll show you what I mean. Give me one second. I'll see if I can do it. Show you what I'm talking about. Although this, this account doesn't have the shipping option. But let me show you something here. If I could find it. All right, so this, is this good? Yeah, so this is an item I just, wait, let me make sure it's something, sometimes I put up things that are, people sell things that are inappropriate <laughs> for a YouTube video. All right, so this is just a uh, a bedspread someone's selling. This doesn't look like a drop shipper, but it's a good example because on the right here, now as a buyer, I could come in here and click this button, this is buy now, and I will be able to purchase it from this buyer who's in um, road, no, Kentucky, and no matter where in the United States I am, they'll ship it to me. So that's what the buy now button is. So the payment will go through Facebook, uh, be held by Facebook until this person uploads a tracking number that shows a uh, valid tracking number. And a few days later, the money will be released to them. On the other side of it, as a seller, again, this account doesn't have the shipping option. Um, yeah, I don't have a screenshot of it. So it's, it's hard for me to show you. But once you start to list the item on the... Uh, there'll be an option for, for how you want to, uh, if, if you want to do local pickup or ship it to them and uh, you, you would choose uh, to, to have it shipped if it's available. Um, so who, ha who ships the item if I don't have the shipping option? Ah, okay. So yeah, let me explain. So if that person didn't have the shipping option, like, hmm, let me see if I can find another example of what it looks like if there's no shipping option. So you guys know what we're talking about here. Um, because if they don't have the shipping option, there are there, there there are options available. So like for instance, this one. This one right here, this person doesn't have the shipping option. So if, so if I were to want this, if I wanted this item and they're in uh, Kentucky, I'm sorry, Colorado, um, I would click down here where it says send a message. I would send them a message, chit chat with Heidi here and say, hey, is this available? Will you take this price, blah, 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 blah. And then we can either meet up in person in Colorado or um, I could say, hey, can you ship it to me? And here's extra money for shipping or they might offer free shipping on it. But in either case, uh, if they're gonna ship it to me, I would have to pay them through PayPal. They have to send me their PayPal email or link or or we could pay with Venmo. There's there's a bunch of different options, cryptocurrency, different things like that. So that's actually included in that free ebook. Uh, that's what I would advise you to do is download again the first link underneath this video is a free ebook that you can download all about Facebook Marketplace dropshipping. I'm pretty sure I go over product research in there. Yeah, I do. I go over product research in there. So I would check that out. Reminder from Sean to please hit that thumbs up button. Good reminder, Sean. Thanks so much. Um, my pleasure. All right, Jay says, we haven't seen Jay in a while. Jay's our uh, resident troll. He says, I really miss being one of your top five trolls. I think, Jay, you were actually number one. Uh, so, and I say that with uh, complete love for Jay. Uh, she says, I miss being one of your top five trolls, but I've just been slaying Amazon and haven't been able to be here for a while. No, I mean, I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you. Gotta keep, gotta keep doing what you're doing. <clears throat> oh, so I didn't actually answer your question. Sorry about that. So yeah, if, if you don't have the shipping option, then you can either ship it yourself that way. Um, but again, you wouldn't ship it yourself the supplier would ship it. So once these items sell on Facebook Marketplace, we turn around and we purchase them from like Amazon and Walmart and Home Depot. And those suppliers ship the item directly to the customer. So even if we sell it and it doesn't have the shipping option, that's still what we're gonna do um, as long as we get the payment. <laughs> All right, so if, if they still de de declined you, I would make sure that you're actually hitting your limit Sometimes it seems like you're hitting your limit, but really it's just because you have too many listings up. So you really want to max, max out your sales. 
and ask at the end of the calendar month, at the very, very close to the end of the month, because that's when it's going to look the best, when it looks like you've, you've sold the most. Hey, Paul, what is retail arbitrage? So retail arbitrage is arbitrage is a word that basically describes when you um, when you take advantage of 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 price differences. Is that a good way of putting it? So when you when you take advantage of of different prices in the market, maybe it's a good way of putting it. So one example of retail arbitrage is you walk into a Walmart and you see on the shelf that these uh, water bottles are only two dollars each. They're on sale. They're on a uh, you know clearance. They're trying to get rid of them. But you look on Amazon and they're selling for fifty dollars each. So you buy up all of them and you sell them on Amazon for fifty dollars. That's arbitrage. You, you buy at one place where it's cheaper and you sell on another place where it's more expensive. Um, arbitrage in terms of drop shipping, what we do is we do the same thing, but we sell from Walmart onto, let's say, Facebook Marketplace when the items are let's say, like cheaper on Walmart, more expensive on Facebook Marketplace. But once it sells, then it ships directly from Walmart to the customer on Facebook Marketplace. Um, other examples of arbitrage are you could do like location arbitrage right like living in a, a, making a u.s salary but living in another country right a lot of uh people who retire will go to like portugal or south uh, central america because it's cheaper to live there but they're still getting their retirement income which is u.s based so they're able to live really well for much cheaper there and things like that so that's another form of arbitrage Um, so I don't know of a way to, I've never actually called Facebook. I've always sent messages, but I would make sure you're sending a bunch of them. I would send more messages. Uh, no, if your PayPal account was suspended, then you're not going to be able to set up an eBay account with it. So uh, that's not going to work. But increasingly, eBay is using managed payments anyway. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about a suspended PayPal account. Doing good, Jon Snow. How are you? Um, cool. Okay, send a message to the buyer, Sammy. Hey, Paul. Does your setting on your Chrome extension override the Auto DS settings? Example, set price and percentage of profit. When we post to Facebook Marketplace. So, Frank... If the item is already in AutoDS, then my Chrome extension, which will allow you to quickly list that item onto Facebook Marketplace, what it's going to do is it's going to grab the price that it's set at on, on AutoDS. So if you plug the item into AutoDS, um, based on your settings, it might mark it up already. It's going to mark it up to cover your fees and profit and maybe sales tax, right? Whatever number it spits out, that's the number that my Chrome extension grabs. So if you're listing from AutoDS onto Facebook Marketplace, I suggest that in my Chrome extension for the markup percentage, you put in zero. So it would just grab the price from, from AutoDS and put that price into Facebook Marketplace. And uh, it won't do any markup because if you do a markup, it's just going to be even higher than it needs to be. Hope that makes sense. Um... If one of your items are selling well and you've already increased its price, would you increase it again? Uh, you can keep increasing it as long as it keeps selling. Um, I don't do a lot of this. I, I actually don't do any of this anymore because it's just too many items um, to do it. If you use something like AutoDS, it can actually do it for you automatically. But uh, yeah, when you get to have a lot of items, it just gets kind of cumbersome to do it. So uh, yeah, you can totally do it as long as it keeps working and if it it doesn't keep selling, then lower the price back down. After going through your dropshipping course, it did over a thousand in my first month. Congratulations, Ronald. That's awesome. Hey, Paul, have you ever got your shipping option disabled? No, I have not. Uh, okay. And you can just increase it by a, by a little bit. It depends on the, on the price of the item. Um, because a higher price item, you can increase the price 
you know, by a couple of dollars and it's okay. For a cheaper item, even increasing it a dollar might be a substantial jump in price. Is there a fee for Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, right now there's a fee of 5%. What are the best categories to sell on? The ones the ones that are selling. So I don't really concentrate too much on categories. I really just look at individual items and how they're doing well. But with that said, there are definitely categories of items that sell really well on Facebook Marketplace. So we have found that furniture does really well. Um, decorations, home decor. Those are some of our top categories when it comes to Facebook Marketplace. And what is wholesale drop shipping, says Omar. So, so right now, what I've been talking about throughout this video so far has been retail drop shipping. So that's when, again, we're having items shipped to our customers directly from other retail websites like Amazon or Walmart.com. Now, wholesale is when you get the item shipped to the customer from a wholesale supplier or distributor, or maybe even a manufacturer. So to understand this, you have to understand the chain of production. The item's made by the manufacturer, it's then sent to a, um, a, a, a wholesale distributor, who then distributes it to the retail stores. So they might send it to the distributor, who then sends some of them to Walmart, some of them to Amazon, some of them to Kmart, some of them to Toys R Us, whoever, right? So you're going to buy not from the retail stores, but the middle layer or even the top layer. And by doing that, you actually get the item for cheaper as well. That's what wholesale is. Congrats, Ronald. Thing looks heavy. What thing look heavy? Hmm. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, this thing. Yeah, this thing. <laughs> Yeah, good point. It's actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's empty. So maybe it's not so much. Ugh. I don't know. I don't know how much your ex-girlfriend Brenda would cost to ship from Scottsdale, Florida. <laughs> Do you know if AutoDS is going to add more suppliers to, to list for Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, um, they're always looking to expand that, Brian. Um, it's just, uh, if you have a request, you can always send them a request for a certain supplier. But every time I talk to them, they say they're always working on adding new suppliers. They added a whole bunch earlier this year, which, is, uh, which was cool to see that they're constantly expanding. Um... Had some items accidentally sell on Amazon after not selling for some time and now trying Walmart Plus to make the sales work and maybe profit and pick up sales. All right, cool. Yeah, always, always, never just abandon any account on any marketplace, whether that's eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, whatever it is, never just abandon it. Because if you abandon it, what's gonna end up happening is you're probably gonna make some sales and you're not gonna fill the orders. Then you're gonna have a bunch of, uh, cases against you, defects against you, strikes against you, whatever the marketplace calls it. And that's not good for your account. If you ever want to go back, even if you're fed up for whatever, frustrated with the marketplace, say, I'm never coming back, you never know. You might come back. So don't just let it disintegrate and fall apart. You know, close the store down properly. So if you ever want to come back, you will have the option to come back to an account that's actually in good standing. All right. I just lost my Facebook ads account. How long will it take for my new Facebook ads account to get going? Uh, you should try to get your old one back so that you can start selling on Facebook Marketplace. And your, your water bottle is quite legit. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I travel around full time in a camper van, which is basically like a small RV. So uh, we do have 21 gallons of uh, fresh water in the van. Um, in a tank, but uh, you know, we just use that for dishes for using the shower things like that But for drinking we just bring this into a you know store with a or a gym Which has a bottle fill up so that we have water for the whole day. So this is the water that that I drink 
I think I should drink more than this though. Something like that. I don't know how much I'm supposed to drink in a day. <laughs> I've heard a lot of mixed numbers about it. <laughs> After taking your courses and following them, I actually think I could sell a llama poo flavored cookie at this point online. <laughs> You know, I you know some people would people will buy anything, especially something like that, like a gag gift or something, or maybe maybe there's a llama a llama lover. But yeah, I warned you guys, Jay was our resident troll for a reason. <laughs> All right, Brian says, what are the best ways to set up your Facebook account to minimize getting locked out of your own account, or is it making or it making me change passwords all the time? Any tips or links on this issue? So. It sounds like maybe that's happening to you, Brian, where you keep getting locked out and it's asking you to change your password. I haven't heard of that happening before, so I'm not sure why it's happening to you. But my guess is that it has something to do with your cookies or your IP address. I don't know if you're using a VPN, like a commercial Nord VPN, Windscribe VPN, um, and you're constantly changing it. That could be why. Or if you have a VA logging in, that could be why. So my best advice is maybe you just want to get a dedicated VPN for your business. Um, the one I use is IP Burger. I made a video last week about it um, and about how I use it. It's also inside the course as well. I just made my glasses worse. <laughs> um, those of you with glasses who probably uh, relate to this smudges. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what I recommend because then it will always look to Facebook like you're always logging in from the same computer, from the same location. So nothing's going to be like suspicious to them. And that I'm willing to bet that that's going to decrease this happening to you where they keep asking you to uh, reset your password. Anyone had any luck doing retail arbitrage at Costco? Mm, I don't I don't do retail arbitrage. I do the drop shipping form of arbitrage. Um, Costco is, is not one that I personally use, but I know a lot of drop shippers who do. And um, yeah, I don't know. Let's, let's see what other people have to say about it. I do, do know they have really good prices at Costco. Yeah, there's some brands you definitely should not be drop shipping. Definitely shouldn't be using their stock images. Apple is one that without a doubt you should stay away from. But it's called eBay's Vero program, the Verified Rights Owner program. And it's basically brands that don't want you using their stock images. And Apple's one of them. Um, Hero Monster is real on eBay. If you want to sell big name brands, just do it on Facebook Marketplace. There you go. Um... Ethan says, do you really think not having product tags for marketplace listings really not affect anything? One of my friends that has tags sells a lot more of the same product than I do with tags, unlike me. So, yeah. So, Ethan, uh, for those of you who don't know, Facebook Marketplace, it used to have on the first page when you listed items at the bottom, there's an option for you to add tags to listing. So, when you create a listing on Facebook Marketplace, you will create a title, you'll add images, you'll write a description. And that, all that is seen by the buyer. They all see that. But at the bottom, there's a section for you to add tags. And tags basically describe what the item is. They're keywords. And keywords are what people are going to be searching for when they're looking for that item on Facebook Marketplace. Um, now, that tag option has gone away for some sellers. Facebook, market, Facebook has said that they're testing out getting rid of tags. I'm not sure why. Again, they're testing a lot right now. They're trying a lot of new things. So they're testing out getting rid of tags and seeing how it, it impacts people. Some people feel that once their tags have been removed, the option for tags, that they um, um, it's negatively impacted their account. Plenty of other people said it has had no impact on their account. Um, personally, I've always felt that tags were redundant because any keywords you put in the tags, you can just add to the description where they naturally make sense or in the title where they naturally make sense. And that Facebook should be able to scan the title and the description and not have to rely on tags. Um, but that's what they're trying out. That's what people are saying. But I haven't seen any negative impact once I lost the tags option. Uh, all right. All right. 
when will your course be available for Facebook? Um, you got to get on the wait list for that. Again, the only way to get on the wait list is first link down below. Get this ebook and you'll also be on the uh, wait list. Okay, next part of that. And if I don't have a shipping option, can some... Sorry about that. It, it automatically goes away. That's why. Uh, if I don't have a shipping option, can someone still pay me via Facebook electronically? Yes, you can. Um, it's not going to be as effective, but it does work. Um, there are other ways to accept payments besides directly through Facebook. Is the extension members only? Uh, anyone can get the extension, but you do have to pay for it. It is a monthly cost to use it. And I think I have a link to that in my description of this video. Can you use AutoDS with Shopify? Yes, you can. So Shopify, uh, sorry, AutoDS does have a plugin. That was called the integration plugin with uh, Shopify. Okay. You're not looking tan, Paul, you must have left Florida. <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I do get comments on like tan, not tan. And it's, uh, I'm telling you a hundred percent of the time, it's just like my camera and the lighting. Uh, and like some weeks I look like super red and it's always just because like, it's like sunset and like the, the, the rays are coming in make me look super red or just bad lighting, whatever it is. <laughs> so I don't think I was as tan as you guys thought I was. So Uh, just... Do you guys laugh at all the nasty comments you get from customers about price gouging? I laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't actually get a ton of them. I get very few of them. I made a video about it a few weeks ago where I read some of them. I might make one where I just like spend it, like 30 minutes just reading all the negative comments I've ever received on like eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. Um, that could be a fun video to make. And responding to them. I like doing response videos. It might be my next video. Respond to a, another YouTuber's videos. Um, let's see. Oh, the dresser you showed. Yeah. They meant the water bottle. It was heavy. Um... And do you love drop shipping on eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, and all sorts of platforms? Um, I do. I mean, diversification is great. Right now, I've just been super excited about Facebook Marketplace because it's the newest. So it's kind of exciting. It's new. It's a new shiny thing. And it works really well. So that's kind of been my focus because I, I don't know. I like learning new things. I like uh, exploring new things. Have I looked into Etsy, Sir Paul? Uh, brief. I mean, I've always I've looked into everything, but... I, it didn't seem like the right opportunity for me. Um, yeah. Etsy seems like a lot of homemade things. Didn't really seem like a good fit for what I want to be doing. I'm not exactly sure because I don't live outside the United States, so it's hard for me to kind of, uh, kind of say to really answer that question. Trying to get back in, they they won't let me. I guess into uh, your ads account, uh, you got to keep 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 appealing. Uh, Lorenzo, send me an email, Paul at pauljlipsy um, if you haven't done that already. We speak to scaling on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, yeah, Frank. So I mean. Scaling, it's going to require that you use some software, um, which I'm assuming you already have. Software that we talked about already, like a Chrome extension to help you list items faster, AutoDS to help you keep track of stock and price levels. But also, um, you'll need virtual assistants. Virtual assistants is what's going to help you scale up. So I do have lessons coming to my course about virtual assistants. Um, that's really what you need to do because they're going to be able to list items. It's going to be their full-time job. So you're always going to be growing and growing and growing with that. That's really the way you got to do it. And I found that for, for all these different marketplaces. You need to hire a team. You need to get people involved and actively working on your store. I mean, how many hours do you have to dedicate to your store every day? Because I know for myself, when I first started, I only a few hours a day, if that. So once I was able to hire a virtual assistant to list items, I was able to do it literally 
eight hours a day, every single day, you really see a big difference there. You really see a lot more growth. Uh, is this live? Say my name, please, so I know it's live. Robert. Okay. <laughs> Last time someone did that, they tricked me into saying something really inappropriate. <laughs> you just remind me to remove the smudge of my glasses, so you get it. I use Nord, uh, Norton VPN and have had issues with Facebook Marketplace. I may look into IP Burger. Yeah. If you have to use a VPN, most people don't. Um, send me an email, paul at pauljlipsky.com. Yeah, it's it's something they're testing out, tags, or removal of tags. Um, what percentage of people message you about items on Facebook Marketplace and actually purchase? That's a good question, Jennifer. I don't have a percentage number and I'm not really good at estimating things like that. Mm. I will admit there are quite a number of people who message me and never actually end up buying. Um, it will happen less when, when you get the shipping option because the default button won't say message. It will say buy, the buy now. So that will help a lot. But yeah, it does happen. I don't know why, why people can be so flaky, um, but at least they're nice. <laughs> at least they're nice. Can't recall if you speak about this in the course, but do you have any many students using Shopify with their Facebook Marketplace business, and is it worth it? Um, I don't know. I, there's I, there's no way for me to collect data on my students like that. You know, they take the course and they just do their thing. I do hear from obviously a lot of them, um, but not about this specific topic. But it is something that I that I recommend, especially if you don't have, or really only when you don't have the shipping option, because what you can do is you can send the customer to your Shopify store. And your Shopify store, if it looks very professional, looks like a legitimate website, has the products on it, they can purchase directly there on Shopify um, with no issue. And you know it still looks completely legit, like they're really buying from a business, because they are. Enjoyed watching the videos about the messages you received, yeah. Mm-hmm. And don't drop ship some great advice from Omar today. And don't drop ship from China um, to the United States. You should always drop ship from the United States to the United States on the platform. Yeah, generally that's what I do. So um, I've I've dabbled in drop shipping from China to sellers to buyers on eBay, and it has worked. That was right before COVID, and so obviously once COVID hit, I turned that off and just never turned it back on. Uh, I much prefer drop shipping from the United States to the United States. Customers get their items faster. We get really excellent customer support and all of that. Can you drop ship AliExpress to like eBay? Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of people do it and make a lot of money with it. It's just not the, not the model that I use. They might come after you after they track down your video and their comments. All right, is that something? All right. Uh, yeah, so again, don't really use AliExpress because of that reason, because of the long delivery and shipping time, but we use like uh, retailers here in the United States or wholesalers. I just hope they offer the business option on Facebook. With Facebook Shop, you have to drive traffic to it, which costs money. Yeah, so Frank, this is what I was talking about way earlier, I was leading, alluding to, was that you can have a Facebook Shop on Facebook, um, which right now, in order to get people to buy from it, you do have to actually get people to visit that shop, which costs money. But Facebook Marketplace has said that Facebook Shops, any items you have in there, some people are able to automatically add those items to Facebook Marketplace. So that's a way for a store to sell on Facebook Marketplace, but it's not available to everyone. But this new feature is different where it actually gives allows you to list as the business page. So it's kind of confusing. There's two different ways to do that. I'm not really sure which one they're going with, why 
neither of them work for me. <laughs> so that's kind of frustrating. Uh, that's funny. Um, let's see. I see people selling Vero items all the time on eBay and also using stores that aren't in audit. Yes. Um, give me one second. I didn't buy cookies. <laughs> I'm being asked if I bought cookies. <laughs> all right. There's, really, there's technically no limitation on Facebook Marketplace for the number of items that you can list. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see, Jay, Jay, I'm not falling for it, Jay. Not falling for it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Paul, I love IP Burger because it's my favorite company to have a brand new IP address. Mar, you kind of look familiar to me. Have we met before? Like a meetup or something? Let's see. We're running out of time here, so I'm just going to kind of quickly scan if there's any ones I haven't really answered. My pleasure. Um, okay. My pleasure. Yeah, so it needs the ability to read data on the website in order to uh, list the items. So that's why it needs to do that. Um, why didn't you buy the cookies, Paul? You had one job because <laughs> we're because we can't keep cookies in the in the in the house in the in the home because then the cookies don't stay in the home; <laughs> they go in our bellies. So no no sweet treats at home. Uh, okay. Thanks for confirming you're live. I would never trick you into saying something unprofessional. I respect your platform immensely. I followed you for a while now. I've already taken an eBay dropshipping course, and it does work. The next course, I think, will be with you. Awesome. That's awesome. I miss you, Paul. You have a good sense of humor. <laughs> okay. Aloha, Kurt. I was thinking about going to Hawaii the other day. We were just looking at flights, and they were like, we're, we're on the West Coast now, which not normally here, and it's like $400 round trip to Hawaii, and we're like, 400 bucks, why not? Um, but I don't know why not. I forget why we didn't do it, but maybe we still will. Pretty good deal. I'm mostly worried about the dog. It's a long flight for a little dog. Can you recap? Uh, I would just scroll back to the beginning. We covered a lot. Yes, you can watch the replay. All right, guys. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and for checking out the video and for all the great questions. If you guys enjoyed the live, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button down below to show me some love. And I'll see you guys next week for our weekly Q&A. See you then.